In last week's video, I talked about you know the basics of logging, how to set it up, how to you know do basic formatting. If you haven't watched that video and you don't know how logging works, uh, then make sure to go and watch that. In this video, I'm going to presume that you're already quite experienced with the logging module and just want to make it a little bit nicer. I'm making this video because a lot of tutorials and a lot of Stack Overflow answers on the interwebs, as I'm sure the youth call it nowadays, um, are all very complicated. They all add extra unnecessary steps. They're all along the right lines in terms of what to do. They all work, but they just all make it so obtuse and <laughs> overcomplicated and, or well, not obtuse, verbose, I suppose is the word I mean. But in this video, I just want to show off a simple way to get it working across not just, you know, a file, but across, you know, the whole uh, programs. This will work, you know, across any imported uh, files and everything. So we're going to start by importing our logging and then we're going to have a constant. I don't know why it's done that though. There. Uh, we have a constant, you can really call this whatever, it doesn't necessarily matter. But this is going to hold our formatting information. <clears throat> now we are actually going to be using fstring formatting and I will show you how to do that as well because you don't have to use the old style formatting with uh, with the logging library. But, you know, we're going to do just as a you know, as an example, we're going to have in brackets, we're going to have level name and we're going to have that uh, centered. Now you can't actually do this with percentage syntax, which is why I actually have, you know, the F string quote, so all, all the format string, I suppose it's called syntax. And then we're going to have the name and then we're going to have the message. So quite a simple, you know, format. And then we're going to have a, uh, a mapping of formats and this is going to have all our different logging levels so we're going to have logging.debug uh, and then we're just going to leave this as an empty string for now and then we're going to have one for each other level so we kind of have info we're going to have warning if I could type in the right case that'd be nice we're going to have error and then we're going to have critical and each one of these is going to have a different style of formatting now I'm just going to leave the info standards you know, unchanged. But for the rest of them, we're going to use something called ANSI color codes to do this. Now, if you're not familiar with ANSI co uh, color codes, then I recommend looking them up. But we're just going to be utilizing these, you know, to uh, to provide color to our terminal output because you don't need any libraries like color logging and and I think term color is a different one uh, that does uh, you know colored text in the terminal. You don't need any of that. And there isn't any insane magic that they do they just use anti color codes so we're going to be using uh those to do this so for the purposes of this video i'm going to stick you know quite simple and use the uh the eight color system however there are 16 i think and 256 color variant yeah 16 and 256 color variants that are a little bit more complicated but i'm just going to keep it quite simple for the purposes of this I've also realized that the eight color system doesn't actually have a gray, which is kind of annoying, but you know, we'll work with it. So the debug, uh, we're gonna make cyan, cause why not? Uh, so every ANSI color code starts with backslash 33 and an open square bracket. You can also use slash u 001 b and an open, but I don't see the point in that. And then for our cyan color, it's 36. M. So they all end in M, and then this number denotes the color. So, for example, if we want cyan, it'd be 36. <clears throat> and then we have a format string. And then we pass just our format in there. And then at the end, we always need slash or backslash uh, 33 open square bracket 0M. And this is our reset character. So this, um, you know, resets all uh, string formatting back to its defaults. <clears throat> Info we're just going to leave as a default. As I said, and then we actually do need F strings for all of these. And then for our warning, we're going to make this yellow, which is 33 M. And then we're going to pass our format in there, and then we're going to have our same <coughs> uh, zero M reset character. And then for errors, we're going to have uh, orange, if that's possible. I don't think that is possible. It's not possible. Okay, we're going to have red, which is 31. <coughs> And then we need to reset that. 
And then for critical, we'll also have red, but we'll also make it bold. So what we can do is we can do slash 33, and then 1M to make it bold, and then another separate code to make it red, so uh, 31M. <clears throat> then we have the format, and then slash 33. 0m to reset it. And then you know what, we'll actually swap the debug and the info around. So the debug is just, you know, normal boring text and the info actually has some uh, something nice about it. <clears throat> so after that, if I just switch back to my notes, uh, we create a custom formatter class. We create a class called custom formatter, and then that inherits from logging dot formatter. So this will be our formatter class, and then we override the format method. Take self and record. So each logging entry has a log record, um, which contains you know various attributes, which is how this string actually gets formatted. So anything inside that log record can be here. So you have you know log record dot uh, level name. <clears throat> Etc. Etc. And we're going to be using some of those to actually help out here. Uh, so we could do log format uh, equals formats and then record dot level number. Uh, so this is the actual number of the logger. So you know an info message will have uh, twenty, warning message will have thirty, etc. And this is how we uh, access the actual uh, formatting message to use. And we do formatter, that is not what I want, uh, VS Code, thank you, equals logging dot formatter, <clears throat> log underscore format. And then this is where we set our style. So style, uh, if we pass an open and curly brace or, uh, or open and curly bracket into this, we set the formatting style to F string formatting or I suppose format strings rather than the percentage style. I'm not sure what the name is, but yeah, you can do that like that. <clears throat> and then we do return formatter dot format. I don't know why I didn't put the dot in there. I definitely typed it. Uh, record. And then from here, we just need to actually create the logging object. Uh, we need to set the logger up to use this formatter. So we have to set a handler. So this is logging dot stream handler. So this is a handler that just you know sends the logging messages to the terminal. We do handler dot set formatter uh, custom uh, formatter, and then we actually have to pass the instance, not the class. And then from there, we just create uh, our basic config. Set level equals. We'll just set this as login dot so I can show all this off. And then handlers equals a list, or I think you can take a tuple or a set as well. I'm not sure. But you pass our list of handlers in there, which in our case is just handler. And then that's it. That is uh, literally all we need to do. So we can now do, you know, log equals logging dot get logger uh, carded logger. And then we can do log dot debug. Uh, this is a message. I'm just going to copy paste the same message in, in all of them. Uh, just uh, in the in the interest of time, and then we're going to create one of every default. While I'm thinking about it, actually, you can actually custom format uh, custom logging levels as well. So if I just bring over my notes, this is from a library uh, that I've been building, but I created you know a custom logger to help with it. If you wanted to type hints as well, here you go. Uh, but as you can see, I created you know a custom level called trace, and then I set a format for that as well. So you can, you know, uh, if you have custom levels, you can just put them in a dictionary and it'll work just fine. But if I just uh, finish off this real quick, and then if we run, still from the old video, hello logging, it will break. What have I done wrong? There is no underscore between level and number. There we go. <laughs> so you can see, oh, I've actually set this slightly wrong. This is supposed to be, I think, I think nine looks, I think an odd number looks better on the whole. I know critical looks wrong, but warning and error and debug all look better than if it was eight. If I set this to eight real quick, you can kind of see that while critical looks right, debug and warning and actually error both look wrong. 
So I tend to have it as nine, and then because you don't see critical errors all that often, then it's not really a problem. But as you can see, our debug message is white, our info message is cyan, our warning message is yellow, our error message is red, and our critical message is bold, and then also red. Um, so that makes it a lot easier, you know, when you're looking at logging messages to, uh, to like see exactly what's going on. So you can see, oh, uh, this is bolder in red. That must be a critical error. Your eyes are drawn to it more than if it's just a block of white text. Uh, so colored uh, logging or just pretty logging in general is really useful and really helpful. A lot of libraries, well, I was going to say a lot of libraries use it. That's not really true, actually. There's not many libraries that do this um themselves but it is in my opinion something that should be used more and it's something that is really easy to do like you don't even need the color logger library because you, you could just do this and you have so much more control and it's not even that difficult to do a lot of tutorials and stack influencers would uh, would have you believing otherwise that it's a lot harder than it really needs to be but there you go this is why i wanted to make this video uh so that is everything i wanted to talk about in this video uh, i'd like to thank my amazing patrons on screen now one pound a month and you can be on that screen too and I'll see you next week where, well, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure what I'm doing this week. So uh, I, I suppose I'll come up with a video idea. I might do another How to Python video. I've been wanting to do kind of object-oriented programming for a while. So I'll probably do that next week. There we go. Uh, so I'll see you for that.